Hello, bonjour, hola, guten tag. Welcome back to um, the Watford Way. Of course, I'm here today to talk about the obliteration that was the Manchester City game. Now, obviously, looking at the scoreline, uh, it doesn't necessarily say that it was an obliteration, but, you know, being in the stadium, watching Manchester City play, I can confirm they did obliterate us. They dominated us from start to finish. They were playing with us, really, and they could have scored six, seven, eight goals. They had the opportunities to do it. Jack Grealish missed four, five good opportunities to score. Bernardo Silva scored two, should have had a hat-trick. Raheem Sterling should have had another couple. Um, and, you know, Watford should be very, very thankful the score ended um, only 3-1. Cucho Hernandez got the goal for Watford, which I was very, very pleased about. Um, made it worthwhile going out to the game, seeing him score that, because I didn't want to sit there um, and, and get absolutely spanked by them. Um, and to be honest, I don't want to read too much into it, like the Chelsea game. Um, I don't think Watford should be looking to compete with Chelsea or Manchester City this season. Um, you know, wh whatever happens in these games, if we get a point, if we get a win, like we did against Manchester United, brilliant. That That's a bonus for us. Um, take it and, and move on. Um, but, you know, I, I saw both of them games as free hits. We lost both. Two very different performances in both of them. The Chelsea performance, definitely the better of the two, of course. Uh, you know, we nearly drew the Chelsea game, could have potentially won it on, on a different day. Chelsea were that poor. The Manchester City, for me, um, will go on to be champions of the of the Premier League. You know, alongside Liverpool, them two should be battling out uh, this season for the title. Chelsea, of course, won. Uh, the Champions League last season, Manchester City won the Premier League last season. Um, so we've played, you know, two of the best teams in the Premier League, two of the best teams in Europe, and we've come away um, relatively unscathed, you know, usually against Manchester City. Um, you know, I'm sure everyone remembers the 9-0 game, the 6-0 um, FA Cup final, or was it 5-0? I can't, I can't remember now. I've kind of wiped that from, from my memory. But yeah, you know, whenever we play City, I don't expect to get anything... Um, I think we've just got to kind of look ahead um, to to the coming fixtures and, and kind of move on from it. I, I don't want to sit here and slate certain players. I will do for just a minute because I think there's a couple of performances I need to highlight, especially from the Manchester City game. Uh, Danny Rose, for me, was abysmal. Now, don't get me wrong, the, the whole team wasn't very good against Manchester City just because, um, you know, any team who plays Manchester City really doesn't look very good. Uh, Kiko um, was back to his old self, really. He, he got drawn into the ball too much, um, left loads of space in behind. He, he dropped too deep or he committed too far forward and that left loads of space for, you know, for Bernardo Silva, for Can Cancelo to run in behind. Um, Danny Rose, so both our fullbacks for me were, were extremely poor. Danny Rose, the worst. Um, I've probably seen him in a, in a Watford shirt, to be honest, this season. Absolutely abysmal. Doesn't look fit. Um, you know, he still looks, you know, I'm not going to lie, he, he, he still needs to work on, on his fitness because, you know, it, we're getting to the end of games. You know, after half time, around a 60 minute mark, Danny Rose just doesn't look up for it at the moment. Uh, Raheem Sterling ran him ragged. The third goal was purely down to Danny Rose, letting Bernardo Silva cut inside on, onto his left foot. And he, he just, you know, very, very easy for Bernardo Silva. As soon as that happened, um, you know, you, you knew what was going to happen. He curled it into that top top far corner, um, all, all down to Danny Rose, really just losing his marker. The first goal, Danny Rose again. He was marking Raheem Sterling um, and he was ball watching. He lost Raheem Sterling. Raheem Sterling made a good run. Um, no one marking him. Danny Rose should have been. Free header for Sterling, 1-0 City. So for me, two of the goals were down to Danny Rose. Kiko, for me, was very, very poor. However, I'm not going to focus on that too much because, as I said, um, they are a ridiculous team. And, you know, their team's worth something like 700 million. Watford's team is worth something like 40 million. So I think everyone needs to chill out a little bit. Um, and, you know, the games coming up for me are the crucial the crucial games and actually will determine whether we we stay in the Premier League or not. Because if I read these out to you now, um, you'll see exactly what I mean. So obviously we've come away from, from the tough run of fixtures we had. Arsenal, United, City, um, Leicester, Chelsea. Um, and now suddenly we're against teams that are more of our level. So we've got Brentford coming up who are newly promoted with Watford. We've then got Burnley who are in the relegation zone and struggling this season. 
And then got Crystal Palace, obviously the return um, of Will Hughes. We've then got Wolves. And then we've got West Ham, you know, all in the month of December. So really big opportunities for um for Watford to, to pick up points I really really hope we do you know let, let's let say um you know Burnley Palace uh, Brentford Wolves West Ham that's five games 15 points available I'd like at least 10 uh if not all of the points to, to you know to, to be honest I think that's what Watford um I think that's what Watford should be aiming for so very very interesting run of games coming up of course, we'll keep you updated here on the Watford Way. We don't just do match previews, match reactions and watch-alongs. We also keep you updated with the latest uh, Watford transfer news, news in general, what's going on in and around Watford. Um, and obviously follow us on social media as well. All of them links are down in the description down below. There'll be a live match preview later this week, probably on Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, and then obviously we'll be here um, on Friday, live on the Watford Way to watch the Brentford game, obviously away from home. Watford going into London to play Brentford. A huge game for Watford. Ivan Tony is missing for them, by the way. Um, obviously, I wish him all the best. He's he's just picked. He's he's just come back positive for for coronavirus. So I wish him all the best. Um, but a really really positive boost for Watford that um, Canos and Ivan Tony uh, are missing for Brentford as they face Watford. So big news for Watford. Um, and hopefully that can spur them on to, to bring home the three points. So I'll see you all on Wednesday or Thursday, whenever we do our live match preview for the Brentford game. Um, and yeah, hopefully Watford can start getting back to winning ways. Um, and yeah, I'm just glad that very, very tough run um, was over because my word, looking into that um, before it started, I was very, very worried. But we've seen some good performances from Watford, puts up a good win against Manchester United along the way as well. Um, and as I said, we're looking ahead to a more positive run of fixtures now. So thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video or stream very, very soon. Bye bye.